Welcome to the first episode of Instant Strategy Talks. Instant Strategy Talks uh, series uh, focuses on getting the most out of your ServiceNow platform. My name is Ruben Koster and I'm a digital transformation expert at Platformation. This first episode, we will focus on whether it's time for you or your organization to replace your ServiceNow instance with a new one. So ServiceNow primary focus is on supporting the organization so that the organization and its employees can continue to focus uh, on their core business. That's primary and the most important thing uh, that the ServiceNow platform should uh, give you. One error uh, we see at many different organizations is allowing the business to determine functionality. Allowing the business to determine certain customizations to put in, be put in place in, uh, in the ServiceNow platform. This in turn leads to heavy customization, leads to high maintenance cost, and it leads to lengthy upgrades. This means that there is no time for developers to actually focus on user experience, and therefore the user experience stays static. These are some of the red flags that we see already, and we will deep dive a bit more into detail on each of these different elements, resulting in the platform becoming a drag rather than actually giving a competitive advantage. Let's, let's dive a little bit deeper into the, uh, yeah, the different red flags. So focusing on the upgrading taking a long time. Um, so I'm gonna take an example of a large scale oil and gas company. Um, from my own experience. Uh, this company had a average throughput time of an upgrade, which took about 10 weeks. One of the major reasons why this took so long is uh, because we had a lot of customization in that uh, section. So normally upgrades uh, generally should not take uh, that much time. Uh, it should only take uh, maybe a few hours or a few days. But because of this heavily customization, uh, every single point of customization needed to be checked and made sure that it did not impact other areas in, uh, in the platform. Secondly, um, it's around maintenance cost. So just to take another example, a large construction company in the Netherlands, um, they needed to keep a very large maintenance team uh, together because only they possessed the knowledge of the way that customization was set up. So they could only know where a piece of script uh, impacted another piece of script in the platform. Thirdly, uh, we see that uh, a lot of data quality issues uh, actually reside from uh, sticking to a, uh, a platform that um, uh, yeah, is heavily customized. So customers no longer have that visibility in the ownership or the supporting services with regards to their data. And as a result, the, the, the lacking of that data ownership and also of the service ownership and the supporting ownership means that there was confusion all around in the organization. And lastly, one of the red flags are the low performing platform. So um, that means that yeah, we have uh, reports and dashboards that are being created, um, but they take an extremely long amount of time to actually load. Uh, we also see that for fillers wait a long time before a page gets loaded. And on the front end side, so on the portal side, we see that a lot of yeah, frustrated users try to access the portal, but it takes a long time to actually get to the place where they, yeah, are, try what they are trying to reach. So this results in a spike uh, in calls to the service desk uh, because they don't want to use the portal, they don't want to use self-service, instead they are calling uh, to get help. There are two yeah, trains of thoughts around a solution approach on this. So there is decustomization and they're starting out of the box. I'll first take a look at the first option that is decustomization. So that just re means removing customization, uh, i.e. code, and bringing the solution back to out of the box. This is very, very costly, uh, especially due to the fact that it's very unpredictable on uh, decustomization actually uh, having an impact on other scripts. So taking away some of the scripts on one side and not knowing the impact of, uh, of scripts on the other side, because very often we see that scripts are built on top of scripts. Therefore, we say, well, start fresh, start out of the box and start with a new instance. This is our proven and advised approach. 
And um, I'm already hearing you thinking, this is completely impossible because it's far too costly. And we are reinventing the wheel. Uh, we have a platform in place already that uh, is following the procedures of the organization. Um, so now we are doing all of that again. Well, actually our approach is exactly the opposite of reinventing the wheel. ServiceNow has gone a long way to actually realizing the utilization of industry standard practices and utilizing ITL, for example, for the service management side of uh, ServiceNow. That actually means that you are following proven practices, proven theories uh, from the industry already. And therefore you're able to realize true simplicity within your organization. Now, some of the benefits of uh, going out of the box uh, it is, first of all, of course, saving you massively on uh, maintenance cost. It is opening up the opportunity for your development team also to focus on different areas, focus on innovation. And it gives you also the control of the team. Yeah, you're not dependent on certain individuals that have all of the knowledge captured in their head on understanding uh, which script impacts what kind of script. If you stay out of the box, that is uh, no longer an issue. Secondly, we greatly reduce the upgrade effort. Again, going back uh, to the example that I used before about the major oil and gas company, uh, we see quite often that this upgrade takes uh, on average uh, uh, 13 weeks, sometimes uh, 12 weeks, 12, 13 weeks, uh, quite a long time. And ServiceNow comes out with an upgrade every six months. This means that during the project life cycle, uh, we usually see a upgrade well, once or twice. And uh, by sticking to out of the box within that particular project, um, we, we actually saw that uh, an upgrade could be done within a single day rather than the 13 weeks that it was before. So that was a great opportunity that we saw directly impacting that, uh, that project. Thirdly, we are able to utilize ServiceNow to its complete and full uh, potential. Uh, it's an improved user experience this, this, of course, leads to a higher yeah, user experience of employees, uh, but also of our customers. In addition to that, you can also focus on the automation part, the uh, artificial intelligence, the mach machine learning, um, and the chatbots that uh, have come out, uh, out of the box uh, for, by ser ServiceNow as well. Fourthly, it also gives you the opportunity to improve. Uh, a clean environment also means that you're able to implement the CSDM uh, data model. And the CSDM data model stands for the Common Service Data Model. Uh, this is a framework that is put in place to organize your data. Going back to the red flags, it gives you uh, ownership over the services that you provide within your own organization. It also allows you to predict value chains in, uh, in the future. And then the last point uh, is around operational uh, service now, yeah. Uh, changes to deploy. Uh, what that means is um, ServiceNow is transitioning towards a DevOps approach. And that means that they are no longer going to be working with uh, update sets, but they're actually transitioning towards scoped applications. So deploying through applications. That means a complete new way and a, uh, yeah, a, a new way of actually uh, deploying new functionality in ServiceNow. And that of course is also a big change to, um, uh, yeah, to, to the current ways of working. Now that you are aware of the red flags and also of the benefits, um, and you might notice that this also applies to your organization, you might ask yourself, well, how could I possibly take that leap and transition towards a new instance? Well, that's exactly what we are going to focus on in our next episode, how to transition to a new instance. In this episode, we will explain to you our proven project deployment approach almost guaranteeing success.